Carl Bradshaw from Chevron Motorsports here at PRP today. So PRP has been in business for just over 20 years now. We're going to come in and meet Jason. Hey, Jason, how you doing, man? Hey, Kyle, how's it going, man? Doing good, doing good. Thanks for having us here today. Yeah, thanks for coming in, man. We're excited to have you guys here. Check out the new place. So I was telling the viewers that you guys have been in business just over 20 years, yep. and you guys do all kinds of stuff for the side-by-side -side market. We do seats and harnesses and door bags and things of that nature. And now you find yourselves dropped down in front of the harness wall. Now, harnesses can be a little bit confusing to some people. Yep. Um, if you were going to give us a harness 101 right now, what would that look like? Um, I... We actually tell a lot of people, they ask us, uh, should I get seats or harnesses first? And man, you know, we made our name on seats, of course, but if you really want to be safe, you got to get away from those stock mm -hmm. harnesses in a UTV. Uh, they're great if you're just kind of tooling around or going on some trails, but if you really want to get on out in the <laughs> desert or, or in the dunes, you know, you want to have a good set of four or five point harnesses. So yeah, our, our difference in harnesses is four or five points. We have a lot of different options. There's different attachment options. Uh, we have the easy adjusters on the shoulders, which make it real easy to loosen up or tighten your, your shoulder belts. So that way, when you're stopped talking with your friends, you can kind of loosen them up, you can move around, and then you can really uh, hammer down and get on the trails again. That's very interesting. So the last car I was in that had a five-point harness, they were like adjusters that you had to literally feed the loop through yeah. and pull it down. And once you got it set, it was set. So getting into them was kind of tough and then getting out was kind of tough. But when you're in it, it was perfect and, and set at the right spot. So you're saying these have quick releases. You just flip up, you can move around. That's really yeah. nice. Yeah. So when you stop or again, you're just hanging out with your friends or you kind of stop and you're, you're waiting a little bit to get back on the trail, the, uh, the easy adjusters, you just pull right up on the adjuster and pull down on the strap and it, it comes right up and loosens right up and you can reach your glove box, you can reach around the cab, anything you need to do. So when it comes to harnesses, we have two inch webbing, we've got three inch webbing. What would you say as far as the proper thickness of webbing for the type of driving that these guys are doing? Really the thickness of the webbing is uh, secondary. We've had all the harnesses tested. Now while there's different certifications, you've heard of F FIA, SFI is our certification for our harnesses. Um, the, the, all of them have actually been tested the same tolerances. So even our two inch, our three inch, they all uh, they all get tested. I think it was six thousand pounds where some of them wow. finally started breaking, and uh, and six thousand pounds is way more than what you need. So <laughs> either one is going to be real safe. It's really about uh, the style of harness you want to get to where it's like our four point two and our four point three is sewn together at the lap, and then the five points, uh, the five point three, the five point three by two, it's that traditional latch and link that all comes apart. Okay. So. A little more difficult sometimes for people to put together. That's why we have the four points. It's real easy to latch together. You just want to make sure that the lap belt is really sitting low and stays low because it can have a tendency to ride up without a fifth point. So that's the only thing we recommend. Now, as far as the harnesses that you guys sell, what harnesses do you personally use? Uh, I like the 5.3 by 2 actually. It's got a little bit thinner shoulder strap, and then it's got the three-inch uh, lap belt, which kind of feels nice and snug and, and secure. And then that two inch shoulder strap doesn't rub your neck as much mm -hmm. uh, with even with our nice soft pads. If you have a nice big three inch harness, it can start wearing after a long ride where the two inches is a little thinner and it feels more comfortable. Now, as far as the naming convention of the harnesses themselves, we have a 5.3, 5.2, mm -hmm. all kinds of different numbers, almost like the Harley alphabet soup. Uh, <laughs> so for the end user, what is the simple breakdown of those numbers? So the basic breakdown of the naming convention is that the first number refers to the number of attachments you have. Okay. So you have four point or five point. Uh, we even have a six point belt. Um, and then the second number refers to the width of those attachments. So a 4.2 is a four point attachment and two inch belt. 5.3 is a five point attachment, three inch belt. And then the, the one that I like, I was saying is a 5.3 by two, and that's a three inch lap and a two inch shoulder, five point belt. So just kind of a quick number, you know, breakdown like that. It's, it, we try to keep it straightforward, but um, I know sometimes it does confuse people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's confusing until you hear what, what those numbers are, and they're like, oh, it makes total sense. I should have got that on my own. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jason, thanks for that understanding of those numbers there. Sure. Now, can you show us a couple examples of what that four-point and that five-point harness look like? Yeah, absolutely. So right here behind us, we have the four-point belts. And this is actually our most popular belt as far as dollar volume sales, everything. It's just, it flies off the shelves. Um, it's The four-point here is, again, the four attachments. This happens to be sewn together at the lap, okay. which, which is a good differentiator. The other type we'll look at in a second all comes apart, which is safer and say a rollover for racing. Hmm. Um, this has the automotive style latch. So it's the same kind of latch they use in the stock UTVs. Uh, it holds up with dust and dirt and everything. And it's real, real solid, real, real reliable latch there. Um, and just like all of our harnesses, we have all black hardware. Here's those easy adjusters we were talking about. But the real, the main thing again is that four point is sewn together at the lap and it just makes easy to clip in, clip out. So Sunday at the lap and we have an automotive style buckle. Yep. 
So moving down the wall here, we're looking at a five-point harness. Jason, can you please give us the anatomy here of the five-point harness? Absolutely. So the five-point harness is, um, the main thing is that it has this anti-submarine strap. And what this does is keep that lap belt down and keep, uh, keep the harness in place for if you say you go end over end, you're not going to slide out underneath the, the lap belt. So it's a real big safety feature on there. The other thing is all of the uh, attachments go into this one buckle here. And again, in case of a rollover, in case of an accident, you can just release the latch here. Everything comes apart. It's real easy to get out. So we really recommend if you're, if you're going to be hammered down on the gas, if, you, if you're really going to be flying through the dunes or the desert, get a five-point, get something that's a little more complete and will keep you in the, the vehicle a little bit better. Now, as far as a five-point harness goes, it's a little bit different than the type of attachment that most people are used to. Like you said, the automotive-type buckle is what yep. people are used to in their cars. For somebody who's never used this type of harness, what kind of suggestions or helpful tips do you have for them? It's actually, it, it does get difficult. Some people are kind of confused by it, but the real easiest way is there's, it's called a latch and link, and you take the little tab and you just pile everything on that tab and then slide it in and latch it over. Okay. So it's not as, once you kind of understand how it all goes together, it's not as hard as some people think. It just looks, there's a lot of pieces when they first get into the vehicle. So sometimes that can be confusing. But yeah, you just slide everything onto the one tab and then you put it into the latch and, and lock it down. Perfect. I'm Carl Bryant from Chaparral Motorsports. This is Jason from PRPC. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, take care and ride safe out there.